Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to present uh, a few problems which I can consider like final problems on uh, three-dimensional uh, geometry and it will probably cover more than, more than one lecture. Uh, today I would like to discuss just one problem and probably there will be some others. Um, it looks maybe a little bit more complicated than it really is. Um, after all, it's all just Pythagorean theorem and a couple of formulas uh, which we have here. So what's the problem? Problem is as follows. There is a cone and this is the base. And, a, uh, and the sphere is inscribed into this cone in such a way that it touches um, the side surface of the cone and it also touches the uh, the base of the cone. Now the cone is obviously um, it, it's presumed to be a um, uh, right uh, circular cone so the base is a circle and uh, the apex projects right into the center of this uh, base, circular base. Now um, I don't want to discuss right now the fact that this sphere um, actually is um, touching the base exactly at the center. We will discuss it maybe later. And it also touches um, the side surface of a, of a cone um, along a circle. It's kind of obvious and there are certain considerations of symmetry which can be actually used to prove it and uh, I would like to basically right now con to con I would like to concentrate only on calculating certain things um, wh which basically represent this problem and I will leave these uh, a little bit uh, more obscure maybe considerations to after I will get the result of the problem so the problem states that the circle has a radius known R and it's also known that um, a circle which is the circle of tangency wherever all the points um, of the uh, side surface are touching the points of a sphere so these are actually a circle and again we will be discussing this maybe after all so what I know about this is the following that if I will draw a radius from a center to the point of tangency that would be an angle of 60 degrees so knowing these two parameters the radius of a sphere inscribed into a cone and the fact that tangency is viewed from the center at the angle of 60 degree relative to a horizon uh, I would like to find the volume of the cone now um, probably the best way to approach this problem is to convert it into a uh, two-dimensional um, uh, geometry so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the whole picture uh, by a plane which goes through the axis of the cone and diameter of the sphere um, and what will I get as a result? Well, the cone will be basically a triangle, right? That will be my result of the cutting of the cone vertically along the um, along its axis, along its altitude. Now the sphere would be actually inscribed into this triangle and what I know is this is an altitude that this angle relative to a uh, this angle is 60 degrees and this is the radius. Now to find out the volume of the cone I need two things. I need the cone's altitude and I need the radius of a base, right? Okay, so um, the altitude is easy from this, uh, from this drawing because 
uh, if this is let's say S A B O and this is letter T for point of tangency so I know that uh, I also need this one it's called C I know that the altitude of the cone which is basically an altitude of this triangle SC is basically uh, a combination of two segments SO and OC now OC we know that's R now how can we determine SO well obviously from this right triangle we know the catheters OT is equal to R and we know that this angle is 60 degree which means this angle is 30 degree and this is also 60 right so what is a hypotenuse if this is R well uh, it's obviously the um, R divided by square root of 3 times 2 is that right uh, yes now um, this particular catheter's ST should be half of the hypotenuse in which case it's R over square root of 3 so this is SO and this is ST and let's check the uh, Pythagorean theorem this square which is hypotenuse which is 4 R divided by 3 this square is r squared divided by 3 and this is r squared or 3r squared divided by 3 if you summarize you will have this one right so Pythagorean theorem is correct everything is fine so we found the hypotenuse we found SO and since we found SO we can find the SC which is equal to SO plus another R, so that's an altitude of the cone, right? So it's 2R over uh, square root of 3 plus R. That's my um, altitude of the cone. So that seems to be simple, right? Now, how to find the radius of the base, which is basically BC? Um, it's, else, it, it, it's also not very difficult because obviously triangles SOT and triangle SBC are similar right both are right triangle and both have both share the angle of 60 degrees now since they are similar I can um, I can do the following BC divided by um, OT equals to um, so this is 30 degree equals to SC divided by SC catheters against 30 divided by ST so I know this now what do I know OT is R so BC over R equals to SC SC I know what that is it's this one uh, let me maybe uh, make it a little easier what is it let's multiply it by square root of 3 that would be 2 square root of 3 r divided by 3 and this is 3 r divided by 3 so it's plus plus 3 r right 
So that's my SC. Okay, 2 square root of 3 plus 3R divided by 3 divided by SG. Well, SG I already actually calculated and wiped it out. That's half of the SO, and SO is this. So it's R over square root of 3. So it's R square root of 3. Now, uh, I hope I didn't make a mistake, because I have an answer here, which I'm supposed to come up with. So if I made a mistake, I will I will not make it right. But anyway, that seems to be uh, a sufficient for BC. Now for BC, so there is no R here and R here. So that's my result, right? So BC is the radius of the cone's uh, base and SC is uh, its altitude. So I have to do Basically, the volume is one third of the um, area of the base. Okay, volume is one third pi, uh, and this radius square, which is what? Which is r square uh, times three divided by nine and 2 square root of 3 plus 3 square. That's what it is, right? Square root of 3 square is 3, square root of 3 is 9, and this is square, this is square. Times altitude, so we have one third the area of the uh, base and times this one. times r again, so it's r cubed now. Uh, divided by 3, so it's here. And 2 square root of 3 plus 3, so that would be cube. That seems to be the result. Well, let's check it out if I have it exactly the same as I have it here. Well, 3 and 3 are reduced. Now, this is 1 third pi r cube uh, 9. Now, um, well, I think I remember the formula of a plus b cube. It's a cube plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So cube of this is 8 and square root of 3 cubed that would be 3 square root of 3. So it's 24 square root of 3 plus 3 square of this times this 4 and 3 is 12 times this 36 so it's 3 time times 36 108 plus 3 this by square this so it's 3 and 2 it's 6 and 9 54 so it's 54 square root of 3 plus 3 cubed 27. That seems to be the right thing. Equals. Well, obviously one third every one of those is divisible by 3, so it's pi r cubed divided by 9 here. Um, so 108 and 27 and we have to divide by 3. So it's um, 36 and 9. So it's 45. 24 and 54, it's 78. Divide by 3, it's 26 square root of 3.
And that's exactly what I have. So that's the answer. So as you see, it's basically nothing as far as the, you know, ideas or anything like this. Just a couple of theorems, uh, Pyth Pythagorean theorems and the formula for a cone. What's probably more interesting and more, I would say, in spirit of three-dimensional geometry is to talk about what is, for instance, a sphere which is tangential to a uh, side surface of the cone. Um, or what is the tangential to sphere uh, at all, uh, with a line or with a plane. So let's just talk about this a little bit. It's interesting. Well, let me just wi wipe out all this. We don't really need it. Now, sphere, which is tangential to a plane or a line. Now, what is a sphere? Let's just recall whatever the definition is. Remember, that's the locus of all the points in a three-dimensional space, which are equidistant from its center, and the distances are. Everything inside the sphere has a smaller distance to the center, right? Everything outside the sphere has a greater than r distance from a center. So it kind of divides the whole three-dimensional space into two parts, smaller than r and greater than r. And obviously the boundary between these two is where it's exactly r, the distance to a center. Now, if I have a line, for instance, in space, now what does it mean? How can I define the line which is tangential to a sphere? Well, I think that the obvious definition is that the common uh, set of points between a line and a sphere should be just one point. So it should touch it in one, at one particular point and, and that's it. Because you understand that if the line goes outside of the sphere, then there is no points of intersection, right? If it's inside, there will be two points of intersection. And only if it's tangential to a sphere, there will be one point of intersection. So we can actually define that if the line has only one point of intersection with a sphere, this line is called tangential. Now, you remember from the two-dimensional uh, geometry that if you have a circle and you have a tangential line, then the radius to a point of tangency is perpendicular. Well, it can be proven just because this is supposed to be the smaller distance from this point to any other point on the plane, right? Because all other points are outside of the, uh, uh, of the circle. Same thing here. So all points on this uh, line are outside of the sphere except the point of tangency. So the point of tangency is the smallest, differ uh, the smallest distance between a center and a line. And the smaller Smallest di distance, as we know, is perpendicular. Now, analogously, we can talk about a plane. So, if you have a sphere and a plane, we also can define the concept of tangential plane through this intersection. It's supposed to be only one point of intersection between the plane and, and, and the sphere. And again, um, it's very easy using this minimum distance, uh, it's easy to prove that uh, the radius towards point of tangency is supposed to be perpendicular because this is the smallest, the shortest distance between a center and the plane. So all other, um, except the point of tangency, all other points on the plane are outside of the sphere, which means they are further than R, and only the point of tangency is equal to uh, on the distance equal to r. Okay, so these are um, the concepts of tangency between a sphere and a line and a plane. But I was talking about a, a cone. How can a sphere be tangential to a cone? We, we still have to define it somehow. I'm sure we understand intuitively how it works, right? So you have a cone and the sphere is somewhere here and it's just here basically, right? It touches all the 
uh, um, uh, side surface. Well, here's how I can define it. Um, the sphere is tangential to a side surface of a cone, or a tangential to a, a conical uh, surface, if you wish, if every generatrix, which is line connecting the apex with all points on the base, the base is directors, right? And all these lines are generatrix. And a side surface of a cone is basically a set of all these lines, if you wish, right? So if my sphere is tangential to every generatrix of this particular cone, then I can say that it, it, it is tangential to a cone, to a cone's side surface. Now, the bottom, it's a plane, and we already know what tangential actually means. Now, so basically we kind of defined what exactly a sphere which is inscribed into a cone is. Now, um, again, intuitively obvious that um, this point where the sphere is tangential to a plane must be a center of this uh, circle, which is base of the cone. And also, all the points where our sphere is tangential to a cone, to a, surface, a side surface of the cone, must actually be along some kind of a circle. So it should be flat, and it should be equidistant from some point here. Well, let me just, you know, talk about this as seem seeming to be you know, a little bit more difficult concept. How can I prove, basically I would like to prove it, that all the tangential points between the sphere and the conical surface are lying within one plane, and they're all making a circle. How can I, how can I prove it? Well, actually, I don't think it's very difficult because let's think about it this way. Um, again, let's talk about the section of this. Now, this is how this is looking. Now. All these points of tangency belong to a sphere, right? So they are all equidistant, and these two are perpendicular, as we were talking before. Since this is, uh, 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 these are the lines, generatrix, and these are radiuses of the sphere, right? So these are equal. Now this is right angles, right, because it's perpendicular to a uh, tangential line, to a tangent. So we, um, so we have uh, basically um, triangles are uh, congruent because they have radiuses are the same, right, and they all share hypotenuse. So every triangle which is based, which is formed by apex, uh, of the cone, center of the uh, sphere, and the point of tangency, every triangle SOA, where A can be any, any uh, point of tangency, all these triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, so that's fine, which means these two are equal, right? Now, if that is true, and if I will draw a perpendicular from this point to this, and from any other triangle, it doesn't matter that this is opposite triangle, it can be any triangle, it can be a triangle with a point here. So if I will draw from any point um, of tangency a perpendicular to the axis, um, I'm supposed to get into the same point. Why? Because, look, I deliberately put a different point. Again, these triangles are supposed to be uh, congruent because these are also right triangles because I said this is perpendicular, right? Now, 
these angles are the same because of these triangles are congruent, right? And these two catheters, these two catheters are the same because again from, from, from bigger triangles, right? Because those con that congruence. So that means that this distance supposed to be the same for all the points of tangency. So they're all projecting into the same point. So all these points of tangency are on a perpendicular plane to, a, to an axis. That's what's important. And obviously, these two are equal uh, in length. So we have the distance from this point to this point is constant for all the points of tangency. That means it's a circle, right? So basically that's what I wanted to talk about as a kind of um, uh, epilogue, if you wish, to this particular problem. The problem is not difficult, as I was saying, but these considerations need to be clarified because I was using them um, before on an intuitive basis, and I would like to, be, to, to have some uh, more or less solid foundation behind um, some intuitively obvious things like the, um, the line of tangency is supposed to be a circle um, and, uh, and some other kind of intuitively assumed things which we did during this uh, uh, problem. All right, so basically that's the first problem among a series of, um, I would call, final problems for 3D geometry. Uh, there will be more. <laughs> and as usually, I recommend you to review this problem just by yourself, especially there are a couple of calculations, so it would be nice if you can do it um, just by yourself. And think again about the definition of these concepts of tangency uh, between the planes uh, or, or lines and, and the sphere. All right, thanks very much and uh, good luck.